In the lower left hand corner is two tall towers that are the regatta condominiums and next to them is the new headquarters of EF, Education First, and those three very large buildings were built in anticipation of the park that would be their front yard. Mm. Um, to put things um, in the, now in a map form, I, wa I wanted to, to show of the changes to that area um, with the new lagoons, the new islands, and I have a close-up here um, that shows the, those red lines. And the red line that um, is um, ho almost horizontal in the upper part, that is the new um, North Bank Bridge um, that we'll be looking at in more detail. And the other red stretches are other connections that will really tie in that area and make connections possible. You see in that diagram that a pedestrian bridge the, the red line on the top is actually a little bit too short because it doesn't cross over the duck ramp, which is actually larger than what shows on that, on that drawing. Mm. But you see that on the north side, you have to cross over the railroad tracks, and then you have to pass under the bridge to Leverett Circle and under the Zakem Bridge. On the south side, where the tracks are widening out to, to the platforms at North Station, the pedestrian bridge will have to cross eight or ten sets of railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, many of you, either because you watched that program or you've read the paper, have heard about the skate park, which is on the, the yellow part underneath the rounded ramps. And I included a picture of how the skate park will look like when it's finished. Um, but we will now move on to the bridge, um, this North Bank Bridge, um, which is under construction as we speak. You, you see in this diagram up close all the things that the bridge has to pass over. It has to go over f going from left to right. It has to cross over the duck boat ramp, which is where uh, the Red Sox entered the Charles River after they won the World Series in 2004. They went down that duck ramp, that duck boat ramp, and then the pedestrian bridge has to squeeze between the highway loop ramps and the control tower that manages the the bascule bridges, the lift bridges of the commuter rail track. And then you see how, going over to the right side of this drawing, how the pedestrian bridge ends actually underneath the Zakem Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, we will look at some sketches now. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very, it was a very challenging task of how to go over something, then under something. And um, I think you were part of that design process when, when that bridge was developed. There was, a, there was a great afternoon where two engineers and an architect from London sat on top of the Spalding Hospital for an afternoon. And they thought about different ways that they could put a bridge over there that would not only make it physically possible to cross the, the tracks, but that also would be a beautiful structure that would complement the Zakem Bridge. And you see in this diagram, the architects did these sketches that day and said, a bridge is like a gymnast. A, a gymnast can support himself <laughs> like by- Like the top right like corner. The, the top right corner. A gymnast can hold himself hanging down or pushing up. And he said a bridge is the same way. You can support a bridge either from above or from underneath. Mm. For him, the challenge was, as you see in the bottom diagram, he said, you want the bridge to be as low as possible over the tracks, which means it should be supported from above. But when the bridge enters the park, you'd like the structure of the bridge to go away. You'd like the structure so to go yeah. underneath. Uh -huh. And so he said, we'll make a structure that goes under and then over and then under again. And here's the whole bridge now, is that wave going f from below to up to down again. It's a very beautiful and simple sketch, but it turned out to be very difficult for the engineers. They had to do uh, a lot of hours of supercomputer time in order to figure out how to make these uh, pipe trusses uh, do their job of supporting the 
12 foot wide pedestrian bridge. Yeah. So here's some engineering drawings and here is um, a model of, of how, how it will look like from the North Point Park side uh, and the red thing is the, the Tower A and then the Zaken Bridge shown without its pylon. You see here how the the tubular steel structure is headed down and all that's left is the handrails mm -hmm. on either side of the bridge. Yeah. And here's a, a rendering with, with a pylon. The river is to the right and where you see the bicyclist there to the left, that uh, right behind the bicyclist would be the skate park. Now we're going to take a little tour. Um, it's going to be more like a movie we, with, of, of where you show us um, the various um, construction as it's, it's happening um, both on the site um, and in the factory. So I will, I will, you can just to explain things and I will move the images forward because we have a lot of, of very dramatic images to go through in the next few minutes. This is a photograph of uh, the making of a drilled shaft uh, because of the fill that has taken place on this site. There's a lot of subsurface junk <laughs> under the ground. And so rather than try to drive a pile into the ground, they actually drill a hole, which becomes the base for the structures that will hold the bridge up. Yeah. And here you see they've, they've drilled the hole. They have put a concrete column up in the air with a wide U-shaped bracket that mm -hmm. will hold up the pedestrian bridge yeah. when it's completed. And we're going now to the factory. Where would that factory be? This factory is in Newport, Maine. The engineers have said that there were only a few, very few steel fabricators in North America that were capable of building this mm. bridge. And you see them cutting and welding the sections of pipe to make this under and over and under steel truss. It's a sin they call it a sinusoidal truss, like a sine curve that you learn about in physics, that where things go up and down and up and down, and that's what this bridge is doing. Beautiful shapes. I mean, it's, these are just a, even like that, it's a great sculpture. So the next step in this process, the, the bridge is actually made in sections. Uh, and I'm not sure, I think maybe as many as 14 sections. And then they are bolted together and brought down to the river's edge where the welders start to weld the sections together. And we see here, the welders are up on the bridge structure itself. There are, there are three or four workers that are bolting down. Let's go back to that other photograph. The workers are bolting down the deck over the main span mm -hmm. of the bridge, and when they're all finished with their welding and bolting and assembling, they are going to lift up this section of bridge and put it on that barge that's on the left-hand side of the photograph. Mm. And they work through the night um, as well to, to, install, to install the bridge. So what, what's happening here is the, a, a, a very large crane has lifted the main span of the bridge from that barge that we saw in the previous photograph. And the, the crucial technology in this photograph is on the left-hand side. You probably can't really see it. There is a person holding a rope. And with that rope, he is guiding the bridge, which is going to make a, a U-turn as it comes wow. off the barge and it's going to swing around. We might and see in the it next swinging photograph, here. You, yeah. see it, you begin to see the people who are controlling this big piece of steel pipe. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they're done, they set it down on top of those concrete columns. And Very exciting. And they have to do that at night because they have to wait until all the trains have left North yeah. Station. And we see here that goes over where the Boston Dock tours go into, into the river. And that's now installed. Wow, oh, it's a beautiful. Look at that. You can really get a sense, sense of it, of how it's coming together. Yeah, well, uh, we are, I think this, this night shot is the last one of the bridge shots, but in case you just joined um, the program, this is the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show, and my guest is Carl Hagland. And um, you can see that show 
and look at the pictures and the maps in more detail on YouTube if you go to the website of the Charles River Conservancy. Um, and that's also where you find more information about the North Point Park, about the skate park. Um, and since you might be thinking of the parklands, what you can do in the fall, what you might want to enjoy in the spring, we are in the process of planting another 10,000 daffodils. That means we're going to have 30,000 daffodils along the parks. So that's something that the Conservancy does um, every year. And we hope that you will participate in that. And, um, and if you have questions about the bridge um, or about North Point Park, I'm sure we'll be glad to um, get this, that, these questions to Carl. So Carl, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for your wonderful book and for the great work along the parklands. It's a great project and the Conservancy has been a wonderful supporter of, Im of improving this amazing space that we have in Greater Boston along the Charles River. Thank you. All right. Well, um, thank you very much, Carl. That was fun. Thank you. That was so cool. it was. Yeah, that was that so, was, yes, it was fun to, to put the to, pictures together. Yeah, I had to put. Do you do this through. every week? I do it every other week. Every other week. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a lot of preparation. Well, you did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to have somebody take a picture of us. Then okay. we'll finish the disc. Um, we can make. Um, we can stop that now. Can you? Is there a stop button? Yeah, there is. Let's see. Anyway, we're going to put it on YouTube t tomorrow or so. But if you want, I can make you a, a copy if you're interested in. Oh, I'd enjoy I enjoy having it. All I, right, um, and we'll take a picture. Um, 